Hi, welcome back to the shop. Thanks for stopping by. This week's video, we're going to cast this burl in uh, in some resin. It's been stabilized in cactus juice, and um, we are going to make it in tuft blue as per the request of the customer. So I'm going to get my mold release on before I forget. That was loud. Now I'm going to put a piece of plywood on the top of this and actually I'm going to drill that outside of there so I don't fill it full of shavings. Right in the center because this is all going to be turned out and it's not going to matter. It'll all be gone. <laughs> you can see the cactus juice resin get down into that pretty good by the way that come out of there. It is extremely hard. Okay, so I'm just going to mount this on here so that I can, that just gets me above the lip of the bowl so that I can stabilize the thing. So all I'm doing here is just trying to align the height of the two widest diameters of this burl up so they're, about, so they're about the same depth down in the bowl. So I get an even, I guess me the biggest diameter, biggest depth bowl that I can get out of it. It's just fiber tape. It's really strong, actually. But there seems to be a disturbing lack of duct tape in my shop. Now we're going to set this aside. And we're going to mix some resin. So Tuft Blue is actually very similar to what Caster's Choice calls Paradise Blue. So it's really close to that color. So the hard part is to get my base dye so that it's going to be similar to this color. And so I've got some, I've got some ocean blue I'm going to try on its own. And if that's too light, I'll darken it just a little bit with some of the, uh, some blue translucent, which is a lot darker. And then I'm going to put in a little bit of white pearl just for an accent. Now I'm going to mix this all in one tub because it's all going to go together anyhow and I'm going to put only the A side in first and I'm going to color the A side so that I know the color that I have is what I want. I'll just keep track of how much of it I use in terms of dye and then I will uh, be able to double that in the B side if I need to or at least what the ratios are. It's going to be a fairly big pour. So that's the end of that A. I'm going to get the gloves back on now. Right after I take this off. Actually, I'm just going to put the glove on one hand. It's 1,050 grams I'm going to put in this. Or 1,052. Okay. That's 1,052 container in. Alright. Change plans. Okay, so the mistake that I made there is if you've watched any of my, any of my videos uh, where I mix resin, you know that I typically mix them in two A and B, and I, I pour A and B in two separate containers. And the containers are always identical, they always weigh the exact same. So I forgot to zero my scale before I put the plastic container on there, and that's enough weight that it'll throw off my mix, and that would not be acceptable. 
So I will now put this on. See, that would have been 104 grams in that small container. This would be very similar. That's a lot. That would have been 5% air in my, uh, in my mix. So I'm gonna zero that. And now I'm gonna put this in. And see, I thought I had 1,052, and in actuality, I've got about 900 and change. All right, 1,006, we're gonna call that good. All right, ocean blue. Just gonna start with a couple drops. Now it's not recommended that you dye one side or the other side until you mix both together because when you do mix them you get swirls, the styr styrations, you can see the cloudy swirls in there and until they disappear it's not mixed properly. But I've mixed enough of it now that I know how long I need to mix it for. This this mixes it extremely quickly so. Alright. Well, I think when I put the the white in with this powder, that's going to be really close to the color that I want. All right, we're going to call that good to dry. All right, we're going to add a thousand and six grams of side B now. Well, it says a thousand and two. So the end number I want is 2004. Always check your clock when you dump B into A or A into B and know the work time that you have. So I have 12 minutes with this, which is lots. So four grams over. Actually six, yeah, four grams over. That is right on. All right. Okay, done with the scale. Now, that color was good on its own, so I'm gonna add some more, and it won't really darken it. It's just gonna make it two drops in like the last time. Get it back to what I had when I started. Just a tiny bit darker than this one. I'm gonna try just a drop of this white. Now the white's opaque and I don't want it to be opaque. So I'm just gonna take some on the screw. Not a lot. I think that's all that I want. Okay. Now I'm just gonna scrape the sides from the bottom to make sure that I got all the part B and part A together off the sides. That actually made it just about the exact color I wanted. So you can set this in a little gob in the middle. Then you can push it right in with your mixer. Right underneath and it doesn't go all up in the air on you. All right. And just a little bit of white pearl in that to give it a little accent. how that came out. Now I'm going to put that in the pressure pot and top it up once it's in there so I'm not carrying such a full pail of goodies here. 
All right, so it's the next day. Uh, just cut the tape off and turn it upside down and dumped right out. You can almost feel the mold release on the outside actually. If you put the right amount of that on, it really does save a lot of work. So I'm really happy with how this came out. Now this is a little extra diameter here. This is going to be the outside of the bowl where this wood stops. And you can see there's a little void here, but that's going to be outside of the diameter of the bowl. So this is the outside diameter. So it turned out really good. I'm very pleased with that color and we'll get it on the lathe and see how it turns. I have the shape that I want, and all I'm doing now is just taking that little skim of resin off the outside of the burl.
put the four-jaw chuck on now so that I can use it as a base and protect the tenon while I take the screws out of the faceplate. So it wasn't 100% perfectly centered when it was mounted in the four jaw chuck. And so I'm just going back and just cleaning that up and so that it is, it is perfectly round now. Makes finishing a lot easier. It, it's actually almost unnoticeable on the camera, but you could see it uh, live, you could see it. So the outside's finished turn now and I start sanding at 180 grit and I will sand that to 600 with paper then I'll use abrasive paste, um, regular microfine and then I'll take it from that up to 2500 grit with sandpaper again before I put my finish on. This is just a little peek after the microfine abrasive paste so I've still got four grits of sandpaper to get through to 2500 and a, a Hampshire sheen finish to put on after this.
Now I've got the bottom all sanded up. And I had a viewer ask in another video with the same shot about the lines that are on the side. They thought they might have been scratches. And what that is, is the very fine sanding dust from off the bottom going up and sticking to the sides of the bowl. I buffed this with the Triple E compound. And now I'm on to the second step, which is the white diamond. So I do that all the way around the radius of the bowl, going perpendicular to the direction that the sandpaper would have been in. And at this point, there aren't any lines in the wood whatsoever that you can see. Uh, but there are very, very fine lines, 2,500 grit fine lines in the resin. So this buffs them right out completely. So these are really nice shine on the bowl. So thanks for sticking around. If you're still watching, I appreciate it. Thanks to everyone who subscribed to the channel. Uh, if you watch this and like what you saw, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. And uh, hit that like button if you liked it. And if you didn't like it, hit the thumbs down button and uh, leave a comment as to why, please. I'm going to put a few stills up at the end of the video, and we will see you next time.